Hello, it's Jason from Dizzy Infinity TV and ToyBucksImagineer.com and today's tutorial I bring to you the ability to add rain into your toy box. Uh, this will be useful for certain gameplay mechanics, cutscenes, whatever it is. It's a real mood setter. As you can see, I have a really great scene set up here of sadness walking down a street very sad and I think the rain just adds to the feeling of the scene and I think it's a really cool effect and I'm going to show you how I did that in just a moment. Okay, so let's have a look at how this was done, and it was done pretty easily, actually. Let me just switch characters so that I can fly around a bit. Okay, so basically I'm using Merlin's Towers. Surprise, surprise, I bet you probably worked that out if you've used it before. To unlock Merlin's Tower, you need to complete the Toy Box Takeover expansion game for the Toy Box, and you will unlock Merlin's Mansion. And what? Uh, Merlin's Mansion. Merlin's Tower. And what Merlin's Tower does is when you push this button, it turns the rain on. And you can turn it off. So basically, all I did here, oh, that's right, I cooked these up. Just let me turn this one off as well. Actually, you know what? Let's just do it the quick way. So what I did is I built the scene, obviously. I picked the right sky, which uh, let me confirm the name of the sky for you, because you wanted to set the lighting. It's more about the lighting necessarily than the sky, but obviously if you don't have a city background, then this stormy background works really well for rain. As you can see, it's got like sort of sheet lightning and stuff going on. And that sky is called Syndrome's Sinister Takeover, is the sky dome that I have used. Now, what I did is I set up a side scrolling camera. You can make any camera you want, it doesn't really matter. The key is you've got to make sure that the camera is forward enough of the towers that the towers don't get in the shot. Now, unfortunately, you can't put a tower on a path tool, which is why I've had to use multiple uh, Merlin's towers in order to pull off the effect. I simply connected all the Merlin's towers to this logic gate over here. So basically, I went through and I went, Basic set each output to activate the tower and then I connected this trigger area over here that when a player enters the trigger area it sets off this logic gate which turns all the rain on it also activates the camera the camera is active set to follow me I will show you the settings on this particular camera Again, it's the follow camera or the uh, side scroller camera that locks it to the 2D plane. I go down to properties. I've set the camera to follow. I've set a start transition of cut and end transition of cut because it doesn't really matter. I've set the player viewport to the triggering, triggering player, but that could just as easy be set to all players. Turn glow through off. If you don't know what all these settings are, I did a really good uh, tutorial on 2.0 cameras for Disney Infinity 2.0, which you'll be able to find on toyboximagineer.com, and I explain what each of these settings are. I probably will do an updated video uh, that covers all the new ones, something like, particularly ones like this, where you use camera position to set zoom distance. I turn that off, and I set the zoom distance to 9, and I just had to play with that until I got it right that it was just zoom far enough that the towers weren't in the shot but gave me the a nice visual look uh for close enough on sadness that it had that sort of cutscene feeling and then all i did at the other end is i put another trigger area that basically just triggers this logic gate which just turns all the rain off and deactivates 
the camera and that's literally all there was to it it's pretty simple to do uh, you could put cameras on paths you don't have to do it organically in fact it's easier if you track the camera via a path because you don't have to worry about the following which I'm about to show you I'll get rid of this I put this um, uh, barrier here to stop me going too much forward because I'll show you what happens so here's Boba Fett in the rain, but if I go forward like this, see the camera tracks with me and wrecks the illusion because it brings the tower into the shot. So we don't want that. So the ways to uh, make sure that doesn't happen is either you can make sure your character is locked to a TD plane using the path tool to either put the camera on a path itself so it won't allow for that uh, that uh, access to, to move on. Uh, but ultimately... I just wanted to show you that Merlin's Tower is useful for more than just being a cool looking tower. It will allow you to put rain. Probably, most likely, you're going to use it in cutscenes, uh, but it's not impossible, as I've just shown, to use in a gameplay mechanic. Final note, I did notice when all the towers were on at the same time, it did seem to take up a bit of processing power. It felt a little bit sluggish, so when you are using an effect like this for gameplay, I suggest you set up trigger areas that you only turn on and off as much rain as you need in each section of the box. So that is how we do rain in Dizzy Infinity 3.0. I highly recommend you check out my natural lighting, natural lighting, natural lightning effect. Because that could really help to uh, further sell this by adding lightning flashes uh, to a scene like this to really give that stormy, rainy vibe to your toy box. I hope this you've enjoyed this tutorial and uh, look forward to seeing what you guys do with it. Remember to check out toyboximagineer.com for the latest in tutorials. Make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel for more tutorials from me and the rest of the team. And have a great time in the toy box. See you later, guys.